civil engineers have continued to innovate and improve the world around us, helping to shape our ever-changing built environment. We're living in really exciting times. Engineers are already thinking about the new ways to take humanity into the future. I'm going to tell you how the Institution of Civil Engineers attempted to break the world record for the longest Lego bridge, which is part of our Bridge Engineering Exhibition. I'm at the foot of the Severn Bridge, one of the UK's great engineering structures of the 20th century. The team that designed and built the Lego Bridge drew on a huge number of lessons learned from this bridge and many others. Bridge engineering is a window into the world of civil engineering. It's for this very reason that the Institution of Civil Engineers decided to build the world's longest bridge span out of Lego bricks. This is to demonstrate the engineering challenge involved in building a bridge. I'm not actually a bridge engineer, so I'm here to find out how the Institution of Civil Engineers broke the world record for the longest spanning Lego bridge. What we've got here is a potentially world record breaking uh, bridge built of Lego. It's a replica of the seven uh, suspension bridge, which again many people will know, but built out of Lego. And it brings it down to a human scale and it helps people to understand the way in which bridges work uh, and how they're structured. So we're here at the home of the Institution of Civil Engineers to find out a bit more about the Lego bridge and why the institution embarked on this challenge. But first of all, let's find out what civil engineering is and why it matters. The work of civil engineers is all around us, quite literally. We design, create, solve and innovate to shape a better world. Civil engineering is the creation of the big stuff that sits on and under the ground, the infrastructure. This is because civil engineers understand what needs to be done to keep a bridge standing or a tunnel from collapsing. But civil engineers don't only build bridges and tunnels. They've planned, designed or built nearly everything in our streets and between our homes. The Institution of Civil Engineers is very fortunate in having this fantastic building as its headquarters. And so the Infrastructure Learning Hub is a step along the way to make sure that this building is accessible, it's open, and we use it to really demonstrate what engineering can do. The intent of the space is to be able to engage a wider subject with a wider audience in a whole different series of mechanisms. To be able to really bring the engineering story and civil engineering to life for a broader audience. And for me, I find it really exciting that we can get engineering experts to link with the next generation to not only tell the story of engineering, but also to build it fundamental uh, component of what the IC does and a really exciting time for the IC. This first exhibition, this exhibition which focuses on bridges, is going to be our opening show, if you like, to the Infrastructure Learning Hub and opening up this building. The idea for the LEGO Bridge World Record attempt actually came from one of our partners here at ICE, uh, an existing member um, from an organisation called CMAR. So we were very excited at the prospect of putting together uh, the Lego bridge to break the world record. The, the current world record as it stands was broken in 2014 in Germany and was 14 metres in length. And obviously if the IC are going to do this, we want to ensure that we break that world record. So we've gone for in excess of 16 metres, but that threw up certain challenges. Um, for example, how do you ensure that a suspension bridge in excess of 60,000 blocks is freestanding and isn't glued together? How do you stop it from falling down? So in order to demonstrate uh, bringing uh, the Lego bridge to life as a, as a real world example, we wanted to, um, I guess, adapt a project team approach to the, to the, the, the Lego bridge build. So we have a design team. We uh, managed to find a fantastic bridge engineer called Robin Sham to act as a consultant um, to advise Bright Bricks in, in how they design and build the bridge. When I was asked by the institution to help out on this, I immediately thought I wouldn't miss it for the world. This is an opportunity to do something new, something adventurous, something innovative. It's also a golden opportunity to explain to the public what civil engineering is, 
and what we as civil engineers do. We used existing uh, teams at the ICE, so for example our, our, our ICE expert structures panel looked at the design of the bridge and were able to contribute um, their thoughts, their opinions on the bridge design to ensure that it was structurally sound. So a structural engineer works as part of a larger team of construction professionals and will advise on the loading such as wind loading, um, self-loading from the materials weights um, and will then do detailed analysis to help and optimise the structure and then bring it to successful completion at the end. So thinking um, about the construction of this Lego bridge, the structural engineer will um, consider the loads expected, so during construction, then transport, but also now in its final place for the exhibition. How the loads will be anchored back so that they can all be sustained and how the pieces are put together to make the best use of the material that is Lego. In the design and construction of the bridge, the structural engineer would look to minimise bending and make best use of the interlocking mechanism of the bricks. This is a major civil engineering project with many daunting challenges. Why? Well, to design and build a long span bridge out of Lego bricks, that's no simple task. The mechanical properties of the Lego bricks, they are relatively unknown. And to design and actually build a model of this size, that's the big challenge. Therefore, we've taken the precaution of designing it by testing. Bright Bricks have spent the last month building each part of the Lego bridge using over 200,000 pieces of Lego. And because the model of the bridge is so large, we've had to find different facilities to be able to put the Lego bridge up and test it ready for the world record. So we're here at Waden School, who very kindly let us use their sports facilities to be able to put the 33 metre long bridge model up today. So let's go inside, take a look and see how they're getting on. So what process have you gone through at Bright Bricks to be able to get to this point? Um, I think the first stage was obviously we started looking at different designs of existing bridges and did a bit of consultation with WSP and AECOM to discuss with various bridge engineers what sort of solutions were possible. From there we did a few calculations on how much load the bridge would be taking in various places so that we could work out how heavy various parts of it would need to be to make it stand up. And from then on it was really breaking it down into a sort of modules to build. Building it in a module form also means we can actually transport it because at a total length of 33 metres it needs to come apart into pieces. Can just talk us through how this bridge works. Yeah, sure. So suspension bridge, what how it works is that when the load gets applied to the deck, it gets transmitted to the hangers, mm -hmm. which work in tension, and then transmitted up, uh, goes up to the suspension cable, which also works in tension, and the forces then get transmitted to the towers, which work in compression. Um, the towers in this case have some, or tend to have normally some bracing to help with the stability and wind loading. Uh, at the end, in the side spans, the cables are normally anchored to very, very big concrete blocks, which counter counteract the weight of the of the bridge of the yeah of the bridge. So, how does this specific bridge deck work? Well, this is a truss type of deck. It's very good for twisting. Mm -hmm. So when we have wind loads, it uh, tends to be quite strong and, and also quite light. Fantastic. So if we just walk now down to the tower, you could give me a quick overview of the towers and their importance and significance in the load transfer. Yeah, um, well, once the, the load gets transmitted from the suspension cable to the towers, then it goes to the foundations. The bracing gives very good stability to the towers, especially in wind situations. Mm -hmm. So you also mentioned the importance of the anchor in the structure. Yeah, so as I said before, these suspension cables, they carry very big um, tension loads and they need to be counteracted somehow. Okay. And what they do, usually they build these very big concrete blocks to have that counteract effect. Brilliant. And 
With this particular bridge, is there anywhere that it's more vulnerable because it's made out of Lego? Well, because there's lots of little pieces in this uh, Lego model. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, obviously, we have many, many more connections which are not ideal in a real, in a real life situation. Um, but obviously, this is not going to be subject to wind load, so we're not going to carry out a wind test in this bridge. But normally, for a real life structure, we would carry out, carry out a wind tunnel test. And also considering the loading on the deck as well. Yes, in this case, we're probably not even going to load. So how does this project relate to some of the bridges that we work on back in the design office? Well, I think the, the design principles are similar, whatever type of bridge it is. You, mm -hmm. you have a sort of big load, there's a span, and you want to transfer the load back to the site. So the Lego material that we're using here today is actually quite similar to what we use in real life. Yes, yes. Uh, what we are doing here, we are interlocking three Lego members, so when somebody's trying to pull them apart, they, they grip together and simulate the reinforcement or tensile strength, what we have in real life. As with all engineering projects, not everything goes to plan the first time. An issue that we're having right now is that the anchoring block is try being tried to pull over by the, by the pulling force of the cable. This is because the, the point at which the cables connect to the anchoring block is so far back that it's creating a force pulling the block greater than the weight of the block. It can push it back down. So now we've had to add a bit of extra weight to the back so that we can add an additional pushing force. However, to break the world record, we would have to use everything out of Lego. So the plan is to take the weight off once the bridge is constructed, and that way, hopefully, the bridge will still be able to stand by itself. So this entire idea came from one of our very own IC members, Nick, who works for SEMA. SEMA is the online contract software for NEC3, so there's a direct link there with industry. About nine months ago, the institution approached us to sponsor an event with them, and I started thinking about what would be an exciting, engaging, and interesting event for the general public to get involved with engineering. And the idea I had was to break the world record for the world's longest Lego bridge. It currently stood at 14 and a half metres, and hopefully today, we're gonna to break it. Here we are, 30 metre long structure, 200,000 odd bricks, and half a tonne of Lego. Okay, so we're at, uh, we're at a critical stage now. We're going we're gonna to attempt to measure the world record. We've set the tape up to run from a zero point all the way through to the final length of the central span, because in theory, we've broken the world record. The current length is at 16 metres, 47 centimetres. We've got our two independent adjudicators that are going to verify that by walking from the zero point all the way through to confirm that this is a freestanding structure built only out of interlocking plastic bricks and that the length is what we've dictated at the end, which is 16.47 centimetres. So I need you guys to verify that it's a freestanding structure made entirely out of plastic bricks interlocking and that the distance is from the zero point through to the end, which we've measured at 16 metres, 47 centimetres. So if you want to verify that and walk down. And that, that works for me, four to six years, that's in line with that stud. So to confirm that the, the record as it stands is 14.1 uh, metres and that world record has stood in Germany since 2007-2008. So here we are, Monday the 5th of September 2016. We've got a central span of 16 metres, 46 centimetres, so gentlemen, I can confirm that we've just broken a world record. Absolutely, can. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, we've broken a world record! Woo! And the next step, well, the next step is to then 
break this, this bridge down and then reinstall it in a month's time actually at the IC headquarters in London and open it as the main exhibit as part of our bridge engineering exhibition. Can't wait, it's going to be amazing. So here we are in the IC library and as you can see the Lego bridge is being reconstructed behind me having achieved the world record in the sports hall. We're now here rebuilding it in its final state ready for the exhibition. So what makes this a world record is that we've used 100% Lego bricks, no glue, no steel. We've seen that due to its sheer size and strict design requirements that it's taken a number of engineering minds to piece together this world record-breaking bridge. Civil engineers face these challenges every day and often on an even bigger scale. It also reminds us that we can't take bridges or any other structures around us for granted. What I think is to be a successful and creative engineer, of course we need to study physics, mathematics and the analytical subjects. You know, these provide a strong grounding for future success. But that's not enough. That's not enough. To be really creative, we need a deep understanding of the art subjects, the humanities, and above all, a passion. A passion to how we may change the world for the better. Today's world needs many more engineers to help build and power our cities, to protect them from flooding, and also to deal with the challenges of climate change. It's therefore vital that we promote what engineers do and the transformations that we make to local communities so that we can inspire the next generation and become better engineers ourselves. Given what we've achieved so far, I can't wait to see what's in store for the next generation of engineers.